Well, welcome. Today, we're talking about menopause health. And this is not necessarily discussed widely, but many women suffer from this life-changing transition in silence. So you hear a lot about menopause in the news these days, but not enough is science-based. And much of it is clickbait or even leads to fear in women. So today we're talking about changing this and learning about menopause health, especially the way that we do it within the Health Sciences Academy. Now why I or men should care is because the incredible women in our lives, personally and professionally, go through this. And it's not just a women issue. It, it impacts families, relationships, and even workplaces. Now, let me tell you, here's a shocking stat. In the UK alone, more than 40% of women consider leaving their job due to the harsh symptoms of menopause. More than 40% of women consider leaving their jobs. And another one, more than 10% actually have quit their jobs as a result of the symptoms of menopause. So this is really considerable. And that's why today we're talking with Dr. Michelle de la Vega, Vice President of Science Education here at the Health Sciences Academy. She has a PhD in molecular biology, over 25 years in researching how nutrition affects health. And she analyzed thousands of pieces of research and papers on menopause health, and interviewed professionals and thought leaders worldwide recently. She spearheaded the development of our upcoming certification called Menopause Health, and that is why I'm so excited to bring Michelle here with us. So, welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you very much for the um, introduction. Thank you for the invitation. I honestly believe that this is a topic that we really do need to talk about a whole lot more than what we are. I agree. Now, I'm going to interview Michelle here. Michelle, I'm going to ask you a number of key questions that we have put together and also questions that you, the audience, have been submitting. So the first one is, Michelle, the actual definition of menopause. Now, I might know the answer, but it's not what most people may think. That is very true. So most people think that menopause is a long transition phase. And by definition, scientifically speaking, the menopause is actually one single day. And that day is 365 days after the last day of menstrual bleeding that a woman has. So let me quickly walk through um, the phases of a woman's life so you sort of understand this concept a little bit more. Great. So women go through, well, women and men go through a reproductive phase, a phase of puberty, right? So then we have our women have our reproductive years which we can call premenopause. Hormone levels start to drop at a certain point in our lives, in a woman's life. I won't go through all the details of it, but to break it down into a really short point is that it's a decrease of estrogen and progesterone mostly that start to occur in a woman's life that leads into what we call perimenopause. And then that's basically what we also call a transition, the menopause transition. This leads then to the day of menopause, which is a point when a woman can no longer naturally have a baby. After this point, so after the 365 days after menstrual bleeding, after the stop of menstrual bleeding, is what we call post-menopause. So we really have these different phases. So we have the reproductive phases of women's life. We have perimenopause. We have menopause, which is that one day. And then we have postmenopause. And this transition period, which is what most people talk about when they talk about menopause, can last anywhere from three, five, seven. In some women, it actually lasts 12 years. It's a small population. But 
this period of the adjusting of hormones, lowering hormones can last for a long time. Um, so as I said, it does mark the menopause, does mark the end of the menstruation or 12 months after and when a woman can no longer get pregnant. And we only know what this day is by looking backwards. So in other words, you can't predict it? Correct. So we can't say right now a woman who's 40 or 35 can't say that she will have menopause at a certain date. We can't look forward and know when it's going to be. Now, what are the most common challenges that women face during menopause, Michelle? So during this menopause transition, during the day of menopause and during post transition menopause, there are a lot of symptoms that a woman may experience. Um, there's about an 80% average, so about 80% of women experience symptoms during perimenopause, this menopause transition period. And women experience different symptoms. So for example, some common ones might be hot flashes, mood swings, brain fog, problems sleeping, an increase of anxiety and depression and stress, weight gain, migraines. There are over 35 different common symptoms that women may experience. There's also not just these symptoms, but they're what we consider more long-term consequences of this decrease of hormones, especially to estrogen and progesterone. So for example, there's an increase of increased risk of cardiovascular disease, there's an also an increased risk of bone mineral loss, which means that there, more be, there may be more breaks and fractures of bones. So all negatives that we really don't want to have. There's also a lot of fear and stigma around the menopause in many countries. Maybe not all, but many women, many countries sort of have this. So women actually fear it, women in their 30s, women in their 40s, even women that are going through it or post-menopause, they really don't want to talk about it. Um, so we basically don't. It's sort of that hush-hush. And we also think, a lot of women also think that it's going to change our lives. It's the end of our reproductive years, yes, but also some women see it as not only an end of our fertility years but an end of basically our life an end of our youthfulness our vitality of what we are capable of and as i mentioned with these symptoms about 25 percent so about a quarter of all women actually claim or say that they have really severe symptoms which can dramatically impact their day-to-day -day life that's a huge number and are these symptoms the same for all women? No. So most women, probably all women, all have different symptoms. There's some common ones, as I mentioned, that a lot, of, a lot of women will have, but not everyone has the same exact symptoms. So let me give you a couple of examples. So we ran a survey recently, um, and we asked basically women about their experiences through the menopause whether they were in perimenopause, postmenopause, if they were in their 30s, or even thinking about it. So one woman said, I didn't have any menopausal symptoms, which were noticeable to me, simply passed me by, so didn't even notice. And we have another woman who said that it can make you feel like you don't recognize yourself. You lose all self-confidence and motivation at times. So it's basically these two sides that we have and these two viewpoints from two different women that had very different experiences going through the menopause. And that is common for different women to have different experiences. Some might notice it, their symptoms, some might some symptoms might affect their day-to-day -day life and they have problems, whereas other ones just really don't even notice the whole transition period. Um, and because of these symptoms, some women are actually, um, like you mentioned before, some women are actually forced to quit their job or they just can't work and they can't go on with their normal activities. So that's exactly, I'm just kind of you know, processing all of this because it's really serious. And that's what we're talking about at the beginning when we just kicked off about these shocking stats that more than 40% of women consider leaving their jobs due to these symptoms, and over 10% have actually quit. So that brings me to my next question. 
And that is how well do women understand menopause in general? Unfortunately, not very well. Um, so I personally, before I started researching, I knew a little bit, but I didn't know a lot. And I think a lot of it is because of that fear. Um, we think that, oh, it's just a phase in our life where we're going to get all these symptoms and we just have to suffer through it. There's this shame, there's this taboo about the menopause that we really don't want to talk about, which leads to misinformation or lack of reliable information. Who are you going to ask? Who are you going to talk to? Where do you go for that information? Even a problem is some professionals um, don't have the resources or don't have all the information that are provided to women. So let me tell you about another story, another study that was done. So another study was done about two years ago by a U.S. company. And they basically asked women about their experiences going through the menopause. And it basically saw that less than 10%, so about nine, only 9% actually spoke to their mother about menopause and about menopause symptoms. And we do know that, for example, for early menopause, if a mother has it, the chances of their daughter having an early menopause is also increased. So it is something important for women to talk about with their mothers. Um, about 29% of women never sought out information about their menopausal symptoms. So they had symptoms, they never went to a medical doctor for help or for advice or any um, support. 34% of women, so about a third, never formally assessed or were diagnosed as being menopausal. So they just sort of went through these stages and never even realized that they were in perimenopause or were in menopause, postmenopause, never really even considered it, never thought about it, never thought about that stage of their life. And nearly three quarters of a women, so about 73%, were not reportedly, were not reported were reportedly not treating their menopausal symptoms so let me say that again about 73 percent of women so almost three quarters of women were not treated for menopausal symptoms so they literally women are suffering in silence and not seeking medical help wow that's huge and where does this knowledge gap stem from you think the truth is we really don't know that much about what menopause is how it works um, all of the changes. We know some general information, but we don't know the details. And it's because of a couple of different reasons. So one is that scientifically speaking in research, most research is done in men. And this is traditional from the past for multiple reasons. One, because women each month, we have our menstrual cycles and we go through hormonal changes. So it's more difficult to analyze a woman if you're looking at certain factors because our hormones affect how we live and all these different characteristics. So if you're doing studies, in order to get 100 women that are, have, have similar estrogen levels, for example, similar testosterone levels, similar progesterone, is a lot harder than to get 100 men because we're all cycling at different stages. So it's harder to compare with statistics. Um, so we don't have all that information that we have. Now, mind you, this is changing. So in the past 10, 15 years, there is more research being done on women to figure out not only how about menopause, but in different scientific areas as well. Um, so as a result of this, it's really not taught enough in a formal education system. So because of that lack of information that we have and the lack of scientific studies, it's really not translated into education the way that it should be, which leads to a lot of misinformation and women being anxious and unprepared for this stage of their life. Um, adding to that problem, too, is that, like I mentioned before, there's very little menopause-specific training for medical professionals. That's so surprising in so many ways, right? And so I also know that during your research in conversation with professionals who have actually worked with menopause clients, that you've unearthed lots of shocking truths. I'd like to dive a little bit deeper in terms of your last point that you mentioned. So what typically happens when a woman visits a medical doctor and discusses her symptoms. 
So it really depends. So let's look at a couple of examples that will help um, understand this a little bit more. A woman who's 45 goes to her medical doctor. She's feeling anxious and sort of just out of it, not her normal self. Maybe she's a little bit more lethargic, a little bit more tired, but she really feels like anxious, not normal. Her doctor goes, all right, assumes that you're stressed. That's a, a fairly obvious thing. You're anxious, you're feeling out of it. It's probably due to stress levels. Um, and may provide her with medication. So she goes home, she takes her medication, and it might help, right? A medication for anxiety, for depression, that might help her. But because she's 45, there's a good chance that she is going through perimenopause or started perimenopause. But the doctor might not think of that angle and might not ask the initial other questions that are involved. Are your menstrual cycles changing? Have you noticed any other symptoms, hot flashes, weight gain? any of these other questions that could help figure out more of just not the, the solution or the solution for the specific problem, but know the holistic approach of really what's going on there. Another woman might go to her medical doctor with hot flashes, which is one of the most common symptoms during perimenopause. And her doctor may prescribe her with HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy, which is really common treatment for hot flashes. Um, but not all women want to take HRT. There's a lot of stigma, a lot of misinformation, and it might help some women and it might not help other women. So it's very specific about who may benefit, who may not benefit. And it's not ideal for everyone. There's side effects. Not every woman's going to want to take medication. So these are sort of two different examples of where women sort of go to their medical doctor looking for help. And in one case, menopause isn't really been brought up when it could be a contributing factor to her symptoms. And the other, it's sort of brushed off as one of these cases where, um, yes, okay, it's hot flashes, it's a menopause, here you go, here's something to take it without thinking of other possibilities that could potentially help. So another study in the UK this time, a couple of years ago came out and said that women, it looked at women who went to the GP about their menopausal symptoms. So on average, a woman had to visit their medical doctor three times before giving appropriate medical attention for their menopausal symptoms, three times. Um, and 40% of women who went to their GP, their um, general practitioner, their doctor about their symptoms, were basically just told, you just have to live with it. That's really so tough, I think. Um, so what what kind of key messages what key message would you like to share with women who are listening here now about menopause, Michelle? I wish that all women knew that menopause is different for everybody. There is no menopause transition that's going to be exactly the same for all women. And there are things that we can do, that women can do, to lessen the severity and the frequency of our symptoms. Mind you, it's not 100% under our control. There are things that always are out of our control, but some of it is under our control. And there are things that we can do to decrease those symptoms and to help us feel better. So what can women do if they have symptoms? So fortunately, like I mentioned, there are some tweaks that we can make in our daily habits, our routines, to sort of help us out. So for example, some of the symptoms that we may have, are going to be things like weight gain is going to be a common symptom. So on average, a woman gains a couple kilograms, so a few pounds, five, six pounds, during the menopause transition. When the traditional um, idea is that, okay, you're gaining weight, just eat less, eat less calories and exercise more. Well, that doesn't work during this phase of life because of those changes in hormones. So we have to address a different angle rather than just looking at this calories in, calories out idea. There's also a lot of excess inflammation or increase of systemic inflammation in the body, which also would need addressed. Um, there may be an increase of gut issues and dysbiosis. Women, like I mentioned before, might be having more anxiety, more just feeling out of it, brain fog, problems sleeping. So these are sort of different areas and different aspects that we can look at to help a woman um, going through perimenopause, postmenopause. And that's basically where we need more professionals, right, you know, who are adequately trained to understand really what it's about, not just in a medical space, right. but also when it comes to health, wellness, nutrition, or any kind of 
contact when it comes to menopause? Correct. We do need definitely more professionals who are knowledgeable in this area, specifically of menopause health. Um, because like I said, with weight gain, it's not the typical weight gain that women are going to see maybe in their 20s, 30s, and you have to face it, look at it a different angle. So, for example, nutrition professionals can help through this aim, through this time to sort of focusing on the diet and nutritional habits and to help support these hormonal changes. While nutrition plays a huge part, it's not the only thing that we go through. We do need to have a holistic approach. So in addition to the nutritional professionals, personal trainers can help with exercise, looking at those angles, health coaches, massage therapists, stress management, sleep quality um, advisors as well. So it's all these different areas that we really need to focus on and work on and professionals can sort of help women through that. Of course, that brings me to the next question is, how does our new menopause health certification, how can it help? So we basically designed and developed the menopause health certification because of all of these challenges that we sort of were hearing from women going through it, from nutrition professionals that, that had clients and didn't know how to help them. So we sort of listened to the stories and we saw an opportunity to create a certification that's going to help women um, who are thinking about the menopause. They might be in their 30s sort of thinking about going through it. Maybe they're in perimenopause with symptoms, or maybe they're already in postmenopause and they do have symptoms and they want to sort of go through it. So this continuing education certification teaches about what the menopause is, because like we said at the start, not a lot of women, not a lot of people know really what the menopause is in the different phases and what's going on in that. We look at those hormonal changes and then we sort of expand, the certification expands into helping women thrive through this. So a lot of, I've heard a lot of women talk about surviving the menopause. Mm -mm, I don't like that. Let's change that. Let's change surviving the menopause into thriving through the menopause. Of course, you know my next question then. How, Michelle, tell us. So let's start by preparing women in their 30s. Let's not wait until women are sort of already in the mix of having those severe symptoms. Let's start early. Let's teach women about these common symptoms that they may encounter. Um, get them prepared from the get-go and how they're able to reduce their frequency and severity through nutrition, through lifestyle changes that we can make, the part that we have control over. And let's arm women with the tools that they need during this stage of their life, like I said, to thrive through this area. And, it, and that's just the women, right? You know, We also talked about how men and can also contribute and, and support us. So there'll be a lot more um, opportunity for broader impact. And it's it actually sounds, we're talking about professionals, but it sounds like everyone would actually benefit from learning more about menopause health. Absolutely. So for take, for example, I wish that I knew more about menopause health years ago. I know it's with my friends as well. It's the same way. Um, people are really wanting to know a little bit more about this. So a woman in her 30s can really start preparing at this stage of life. They don't have to wait until they start getting symptoms. A woman in her 40s may notice that her menstrual cycles are starting to change. She might not have other symptoms, but she can sort of start making changes at this point, too, to help her through that transition stage. Um, spouses of partners of women who may be in perimenopause or postmenopause. A CEO of a company, for example, whether female or male, can also help with their employees because because we heard the statistics about the workplace as well. Mm -hmm. um, in my honest opinion, I think that everyone, male, female, basically no matter what age from adolescent sort of up, should really have some fundamental knowledge about menopause, about what the symptoms are, and basically how we can reduce severity and sort of live through, thrive through this. I think that's excellent, Michelle. Um, and I personally agree because there is a lot of misinformation and disinformation about menopause health and practitioners can make a real difference with clients, um, but also people themselves can learn much more about what they 
either might be going through or are going through. I'm also excited about the various areas of menopause health, and we're, we'll be covering that in our upcoming webinar on the 26th of January. Um, so in the meantime, and that's for those who are listening here, if this interview opened your eyes and minds, stay tuned for our next interview, which is about the transformation journey from awareness to empowerment with another VIP guest. I also wanted to say thank you very much, Michelle, for your insights. And I really look forward to learning more myself about this topic and also help raise further awareness on such a crucial issue. Well, my pleasure, Marie. And I also look forward to those next interviews. Excellent. Well, thank you very much and speak to you soon. Bye for now. Bye.